Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we get started, please hit that share button so we can educate more patriots around the country. Okay, we kick things off today with Vicki McKenna for our very popular Culture Cast segment. Vicki, good to see you. Great to be here. You look very Italian after you got back Do from I? that trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ciao. Bella more. There you go. All right. So anyway. <laughs> so we're just saying this all, all for the last Ciao. Three, nine days. Yes. Ciao. So now, uh, now that you're back in American soil, we unfortunately have to go back to the realities of American life. And one of those is uh, just how out of control the American public schools are. In fact, they're so out of control that a popular and very articulate defector from North Korea who was a forced sex worker who now has a child of her own in America is comparing the American experience of uh, uh, public school experience for her kid to what she suffered in North Korea. That's how ideological it's become. Take a look at this short clip. I'm a North Korean defector, human rights activist. Uh, I escaped North Korea when I was 13 years old uh, to find a bottle of rice. And that journey led me to become trafficked in China and sold as a child sex wife. Two years later, when I was 15 years old, I crossed the frozen Gobi Desert into Mongolia, then went to South Korea. I did everything to escape that terror of socialism. And in America, my son is in some ways getting educated to become a think like a socialist. Hitler's youth, Mao's youth, and Kim Il-sung's youth, they always go for young children because they haven't lived life enough to know have a critical thinking skills their brains are very plastic very malleable and easy to observe information and believe it and innocent well not only did, was she tormented by the north koreans but when she escaped to china they sold her as a child sex bride how do you answer that lebron james in the nba with all your money making off of these people but we, we, we answer that by not talking about it we answer that by ignoring that yep. but one of in, in, her name's yanmi park she's got uh, an extraordinary story she's got a book called in order to live which was out a couple of years ago i believe she's got another book coming out as well but now she has been in the United States since I, I want to say somewhere around 2013. And now she has her own child and she's worried about what her child is learning. She's worried that that certain words are not allowed and other words are redefined and that he is being taught um, to hate himself or others or to other eyes, as the as the left always says, other eyes groups. And she's she's seeing you know, she's seeing shades of North Korea. She's seeing shades of her childhood. You know, the, the country of North Korea banned certain words. For instance, there's not a word for freedom and there isn't a word for oppression. There are certain words that have been, you know, Orwellian in an Orwellian capacity, just eliminated. And so she's now seeing this with her young child uh, in, in, in the public education system. And she's worried about what she's going to have to contend with. She never thought she'd have to fear America. And now she says she's worried. And that's a, I mean, there are a few regimes in the world that you look at North Korea and you say that nothing about North Korea could be like our experience in Amer America. And the one thing that she singles out is education. education. This monolithic, ideological, socialist kind of education that our kids, she said it herself, right? They're, they always go after the children, whether it's the Hitler youth or the Mao youth. Right. They always go after the kids because those kids are so ripe for picking. And as you said, the purpose of this is to get them to despise other groups, to see certain groups of certain racial categories as acceptable, as acceptable. And as you and I both know, to be white in this format is to be demonic and evil. Indeed, and there, it's also to get these children to, to um, you know, to, I guess, maybe attenuate their relationships with their families it, it, and, and, and create a stronger bond with 
the teacher, with the counselor, with the people who, I mean, when you're dropping your child off for eight hours a day, and that and, and it is entirely a process of indoctrination and an indoctrination that is meant to distance you from your child, including um, distancing you in the form of, of your the assistance that you no longer can provide to help your kid in, in his or her classwork, because, you know, Common Core has essentially removed the parent from that process. Um, you know, so when you when you add to the uh, the deconstruction of of America and and logic and truth, when you add to that a, a deliberate a wedge driven between the child and the family, you're off to the races. I mean, this is she's exactly right. This is what Mao did. This is what Hitler did. This is what Stalin did. This is what North Korea does. And if we allow this to continue in the United States, we are going to have several generations of young people who will not have any tether whatsoever to the idea of what ordered liberty is. And there won't be anyone who can really rein them in because they will have already been distanced from the, the, you know, the, the protective cocoon of their family. What's so insidious about this is that it's the job, it's the moral obligation for parents to set boundaries for kids. Without boundaries, kids turn out to be animals, right? They become monsters. And yet what the public school system is doing in the name of socialism is tearing every one of those boundaries down in the name of false freedom and making kids loyal and, and dependent upon the state, not the mom and dad who are doing what's best for you by holding back things from you. But the public schools are about now telling them whatever you want, you can have. And it's your parents fault if right. you don't have it. And parents say no, mom says no, dad says no, the schools say yes. And of course, it's all reinforced through social media. It's all reinforced through blue screens and peer pressure. Um, you know, everybody, and, and, and they're also now deliberately and directly encouraging children not to share what they're learning in school with parents. They're essentially taking children into confidence and saying, we will protect you. Um, and so now, you, which is why it is so easy to see the overt sexualization of children in classrooms right now and why that's actually part of the plan and part of the process and and part of the way that that um, a political a, a political group uh, part of what they use to separate children from the trust of their parents and, and instead imbue that trust in, in complete strangers who do not have their best interests at heart. There is a story out from last week of a teacher who was at a pride parade who was asked whether or not she thought it was appropriate for so much sexual fetishism to be uh, publicly displayed where children could could be exposed to it. And she said, they're not my kids. I don't give a blank. What do you guys think about kids being at this event? Kids? They're not my kids. I don't give a They're not my kids. I don't give a Why would I give a about somebody else's kids? That's not my job. Thank you very much. As a school teacher, I approve this message. And that is exactly how your children are viewed by the public school system as tools, as simply a means to an end, not as human beings who need to be protected. After the break, we're gonna continue this conversation about is it really appropriate, and the answer is yes, to, uh, to align certain aspects of what's going on in our culture and education to what is happening in North Korea. Uh, we'll see you in a minute. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. All right, back with Vicki McKenna for CultureCast. Vicki, we have another video from this uh, uh, brave woman who escaped North Korea and China, uh, both trying to subvert and sexualize and, and just horrible life that she ran away from. And now this woman is an American. She's got a baby, a young child in the public schools. And lo and behold, she's finding much of what she, the, the propaganda that she saw in North Korea is in American schools being pushed by progressives. Watch the video. It's really worrisome because, you know, I cannot really afford not to work and take care of him and do homeschooling. I have to send him to public education systems. It's worrisome how much I talk to my son and read different books to him at home. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to move uh, anywhere it takes for me to protect my child from this brainwashing and 
because it's not just only that it's happened to one person. Uh, it can be like North Korea. Like North Korea didn't begin like North Korea. It happened because people really believe that equal inequality was the evil of everything, that we all can be equal, and that's how we became that way. So when one more person converting every day like that, we are going to end up like North Korea eventually. So I think it's our personal responsibility to protect as many people, as many children as we can from this uh, massive indoctrination coming from the left. And notice what the enemy is. From her perspective, equity. Equity. This fake notion that's being pushed on all of our kids, that equity is the, pro is the answer to every American problem. And she points out that that's what made the horror of North Korea, North Korea a reality. Everybody thinks equity is something positive. Everyone thinks that the word means something akin to equality. Um, and it doesn't. It, 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 is, it is the absolute opposite. And that's, everybody should understand that about the left. Whatever they say, consider that the opposite is true. If it sounds nice, it's the opposite. Equity is about uh, punishing or, or denying access to the protections under the rule of law, uh, to protections under the Constitution for disfavored groups. Um, and it's about identifying disfavored groups in the name of equity and then punishing those disfavored groups in the name of equity. People think it's about fairness. People think it's about helping black people or helping underprivileged people. It's not. It is about penalizing disfavored groups. And everyone seems to think that they'll never be the disfavored group. And yet we see the left piling in group after group after group. It used to be that women were people who could claim uh, protections under under the uh, you know the the banner of equity. Not anymore. Because what what are what is a woman? Now you have men who are declaring themselves. Uh, you know, women, uh, the reality is supposed to be, the, the irreality is supposed to, surreality is supposed to be affirmed. Uh, and so women now are finding themselves, you know, sort of cast out. And because they're not men uh, pretending to be women, they are now, in some cases, the disfavored group. And they better toe the line and shut up, or they might find themselves punished as well. It's remarkable. This is classic Orwellian doublespeak, socialist speak, right? What equality, which literally meant equally uh, protected under the law. That's the most you can yes. hope for, right? Everybody, no one's favored by the law one w over anybody else, has morphed into equity, which is the exact opposite of equality. Yeah. It is actually discriminating in the name of outcome-based solutions. It is discrimination, not equality. And yet you're right, how slickly and how easily in the American public school vernacular, equity has come to be the only thing we talk about yeah. and equality is forgotten. Equality, in, in fact, you talk about equality, um, you know, you're, you're treated like you're some kind of white supremacist. Um, equity, inclusion is something else. Inclusion isn't inclusion, inclusion is exclusion. Um, so again, the, one thing that people should always remember is that what the left says, what, what the words they're using have an opposite meaning, almost in, inevitably have an opposite meaning. Um, so equity isn't about good things. Equity is about denial. Equity is about penalty. It's about punishment. It's about discrimination. Um, and as Yanmi Park points out, this this began with a bunch of people who had you know really sincere, perhaps, um, desires to end the problem of scarcity and inequality. Uh, and instead of trying to figure out ways to give more people access to opportunity and protection under the law, they went the opposite direction by penalizing disfavored groups, taking from those groups, giving to the favored groups. And you never get out from under that system once it establishes itself in, as a powerhead. Largely because you have human beings at the top of the food chain, not God. And those human Correct. beings decide rather arbitrarily uh, and politically and based on support, not necessarily need, who gets what. It's the Notice it's what's the, happening now. Yeah, it's the warping of the system. I'll give you the last word. Um, I, I think that's a really good way to end this, and that is, and you take a look at just what is going on right now, where you've got uh, a story out today of somebody who had actually committed an act of, of terrorist violence, uh, who has been cut loose by the Biden administration uh, because they were committing it in, you know, in, in pursuit of social justice. Uh, in the meantime, you've got people who walked 
through the open door of the United States Capitol building being racked up on felony conspiracy charges and being accused of insurrection. So we're already there where the disfavored groups are being penalized and do not enjoy equality under the law. And the favored groups are the ones that are already being granted, uh, you know, special privileges. I mean, of course, you also see what's going on in cities as well, where the favored groups are not even the crimes committed by the favored groups are not even being charged and chaos has reigned uh, in in the place of law and order. Um, it's only a matter of time before before law and order establishes itself in some way. And if it's going to be under the guise of equity, it will be authoritarian. Yeah, we're not really all that far away from Kim Jum Biden, are we? Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. Okay, we're joined today live with Alex Newman in the studio. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Duke. Great to be here. So really interesting phenomenon. We're having a spate, a really good spate of uh, documentaries being made about fighting back against the Department of Education. We've got a list of them, show the moms and dads that have come out in the last year or so. We've got the mind polluters. We've got uh, the most recent one, the homeschool awakening from Kirk Cameron. We've got truth and lies in American education, uh, something you and I have been deeply involved with from the beginning, being being me uh, governance members of that organization. And of course, Schoolhouse Rocked. Uh, all of these make very, very important arguments, most importantly, that you really got to get your kids out of these uh, public schools. I've been in, I was interviewed for two, you were interviewed for three of those specials. And so take a look one last, one last more, one more time, excuse me, at the list. And we have a quick clip we'll show you in a moment about Kirk Cameron, the most recent, but talk about your experience with these, these organizations. Well, I can tell you each one of these films is incredibly significant. Each one of these films is going to play a major role in accelerating the mass awakening, the great awakening that we see right now among parents and among families. Each one has its own niche and each one is going to play a critical role. So the mind polluters shows the, the disgusting filth, the sexualization, the perversion that's being imposed on our children. And it, I, I tell people before you watch that movie, have a barf bag handy. You need to see it but it is horrific and just keep in mind as you want to recoil in horror this is what they're showing your children in government brainwash camps at taxpayer expense uh, we've got the new one by Kirk Cameron is going to be huge. Um, I, uh, it's uh, you know it's about the the exodus from the public schools. It goes through. It, it follows a lot of homeschool families. I kind of gave my my spiel on the the history of education. I haven't had a chance to watch it just yet, but I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And this one's going to be huge, partly because Kirk Cameron is so huge. Uh, he's been all over Fox News in the last few days. Uh, I, I imagine huge numbers of people are going to see that. Uh, Truth in American Education is an, another major one. That's the one produced by uh, the U.S. parents involved in education absolutely critical film incredibly significant going through uh, the US Department of Education the role of UNESCO and then Schoolhouse Rocked which which you were in is another fantastic movie uh, I know the the husband and wife team that made that it kind of follows their story on their homeschooling adventure and it shows you you don't have to be some kind of super dad some kind of super mom to homeschool your kids it's it's one of the best decisions you'll make in your life and you really don't need any special qualifications let's take a look at the trailer for homeschool awakening by Kirk Cameron we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I don't really understand this idea that parents should decide what's being taught. Give me a break. I always viewed homeschooling as somewhat of a cult. Quiet, reclusive. The different people. Abnormal in some way. I could never picture myself doing it. Oh no, those are weird. I'm not doing that. That was before we had kids. And then we had kids and... All of a sudden, time for school. And is this really what I should be doing? Dropping them off somewhere else. And the teacher said to me, he would not cheat off of you because you are too stupid for him to cheat off of you. My kid is not gonna have that experience. We didn't have to be a special needs teacher. We only had to be a, a teacher of our daughter. The kingdom of heaven is qualifying you to speak into your children's life. I'm responsible for what we're putting into their head and into their heart. It changed everything. I think as a kid, you just wanna feel like you're worth it. And homeschooling says you're worth it. 
You know, as parents, there is nothing more gratifying, nothing more soul affirming is watching your child bloom into what you've helped she or he to become by mentoring them. There's no greater act a parent has. And all, it's always amazed me that uh, pu public school re uh, rhetoric has convinced the vast majority of American moms and dads that they have to rely on uh, strangers from four-year education departments who hate God and your country and that they, all, they alone know how to educate your kids. It is such a preposterous lie. It's amazing that they've been able to get away with, with selling that because, in, in my opinion, there's nobody more qualified to be a teacher of their children than parents. I mean, it, parents love the child more than anybody else on planet Earth, and it, it's just, for me, it's a no-brainer. And, and you know this is a big deal now because Kirk Cameron is being smeared so viciously by the fake media. They're now suggesting that he's a racist and a segregationist because he wants kids out of the schools. So you know when they start coming after you with attacks like that, you know you're right over the target. You're hitting the establishment right where it hurts. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think we should pray for these people, but this is so huge what's happening in our country. And, um, you know, the Bible says judge the thing by its fruit. Look at the fruit of the government schools and look at the fruit of home schools. You could just, even just looking at the data paints a very crystal clear picture of what's going on. Kids going through the government schools are being destroyed in every way. Kids going through the homeschooling programs are blossoming into uh, God-fearing, liberty-loving, productive citizens who are, are making a big positive difference in their communities. They're well-adjusted. They're going on to create great families. Uh, if you look at the kids coming out of the public schools, a lot of them, they're going into drugs. They're going into gangs. They're going into living in mom's basement until they're 43. I mean, it's, it's, it's so clear what's happening, and these movies are going to make a, a, a historic impact. It's time for Trending Left. We've compiled some of the craziest of stories making waves across the internet. It's June, which of course means everyone must be forced to endure a triple helping of the Rainbow Mafia indoctrination. And a great place to start our journey of colorful oppression is in Richmond, California. The Aspire Richmond California College Preparatory Academy welcomed a man dressed in drag to perform for, you know, middle school students. Enjoy the lip sync stylings of... And I kid you not, drag queen jizz performing for the children. Well, I would like to believe that the children were all applauding because they knew the song was almost over, which hopefully meant he would be done. Anyway, we're going to go next now to New York City, all the way across the country, from the West Coast to the East Coast, where middle school MS-88, where taxpayer dollars were used to hire drag queens to normalize men in dresses and, you know, teach kids how to apply makeup, because that's obviously my first choice. They literally just put clown music over the top of this clown show. Like, they self-owned on that one. Now, since the last two stories have focused on middle schoolers, mostly the dragers of middle schoolers, drag people, anyway, let's drop it down a finger painting or two and head to Catalyst Public Schools in Bremerton, Washington. You see, you can't call it an indoctrination if you don't include the six-year-olds. But don't worry. The first graders at this elementary school all got a chance to showcase their unwavering support by showcasing various kinds of homemade LGBT flags. $20 says these kids could not describe what the U.S. flag looks like. And if you think that's bad, first graders in Canada, oh Canada, actually had to get their parents' permission to receive their own country's flag from members of the Lions Club on Canada Day. <sighs> I think some of their leaders have been hit by the progressive puck one or two or 16 too many times because it's Canada. What else do you expect from up north?
Now, speaking of that silly country up north, with all their syrup and their Tim Hortons and their socialized health care, of all things, a wellness center thought they'd leave their stamp on the next generation by teaching kids how to twerk. For a mere 10 to $20, people of all ages, including children, can share twerk-throughs in deep buttocks conversation. Yes, yes, twerk-throughs in deep buttocks conversation. Come ready to move in loose and jiggle label. Get it like jiggle, jiggable, jiggle label attire. Not Canada. Keeping it classy as always. Mm. Again, why would you want to go to Canada in the first place? But that's all we have time for today, and it's going to wrap up this segment until the next segment when we have even more craziness. And that's going to do it for this show. Hey, takeaway. When people start comparing education in North Korea to America, you got problems. I'm Dr. Duke. Until next time, stay educated, please, my friends.